While her male contemporaries were busy grasping at medieval ideas of color symbolism, Martha Bernstein was reading color physiology and physics. After studying painting with Matisse in Paris, around 1912, she returned to Germany and began lecturing in color theory. Though the war interrupted her work for a while, in 1921, she published her lectures in a book called The Beauty of Color in Art and Everyday Life. She wanted lots of color diagrams, but wartime shortages and complications reduced those diagrams to one this beautiful frontispiece. I want you to notice both the color terms and the way the hues are arranged in her color circle. Notably, she has yellow opposite blue, a sort of deep blue, which most of the science textbooks at the time would have called ultramarine, blue-violet, or even straight-up violet. Now, there's only one other color wheel in the 19th century that I know of which would put yellow and blue opposite each other and that's Brucke's. So it turns out Bernstein's color wheel is a direct adaptation of one found in the 1866 Physiology of Color by Dr. Ernst Wilhelm von Brucke, whose name might be known to color scientists today from the basal Brucke effect. That's the tendency of hues to lean more blue or more yellow at high luminance levels. Bernstein repeatedly cites Brucke and other color scientists in her book, and she updated her second edition in 1925 to include notes on the latest work in color science, including Wilhelm Ostwald. Meanwhile, in the Bauhaus, teaching artists like Paul Klee and Johannes Itten were busy rejecting science and promoting ideas about color based in Goethe's theories from a century earlier. Bernstein went to Paris to study because in Germany at the time, misogyny curtailed her opportunities. The disparaging term Malweibe or painting woman was used to label artistically ambitious women, and they weren't welcome in artistic academies. Nonetheless, Bernstein's family was open-minded and willing to send her to Paris, where, along with other expat Malweiber, she settled in Montparnasse and flourished. You can find some of her artwork online, but note that she's usually credited as Marta Neuhaus Bernstein, due to her short-lived marriage with the music critic and conductor Max Neuhaus. If I knew that T, I'd spill it. She got divorced, her book was translated into English in 1928, and after that she sort of falls off the map. The rise of the National Socialist Party in Germany might have something to do with that. Marta's mother was Jewish, and she and her brothers had to flee Germany in the 30s and 40s. Finally, she was able to return to Germany in 1950 and live out her final years in obscurity. If you want to learn more about the forgotten history of women color theorists, you could check out this project hosted by the University of Sussex and led by Dr. Alexandra Lasky. Or check out Dr. Lasky's recent book, The Book of Color Concepts. Although Bernstein is not included, it has several chapters on little-known women color theorists and is well worth checking out. If you'd like to buy a copy, there's a link in my link tree.